Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at the CHIP $9 computer. So let's get started by having a look at the layout. First we've got the system on chip and NAND, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module, the composite video module, the micro USB, regular USB and headers U13 and U14. Now let's go over to the terminal. Okay, here we are at the terminal and in order to get here I had to go to 42.nextthing.co and do the bare metal installation. Now, I'm not going to go over this in a lot of detail because we're told that chips that ship out will have something installed on them. But very briefly, if you click on getting started with chip, you can go to installing an operating system. And the Ubuntu here doesn't mean it's going to install Ubuntu, it means you need Ubuntu to install it. You can do that either with a virtual machine, which I haven't tried, or just with Ubuntu regularly. And once you've done that, you can get the Wi-Fi up and running. They do have good instructions. They're not 100%, but they're not bad. And once you have the Wi-Fi up and running, you can connect in with a terminal. So I just want to give you a very brief overview of uh, what I've done. Um, pretty. Uh, pretty easy to get things up and running. I used the standard install and then I wanted to take a look at what I could install. And really three things I wanted. The first one was Node, um, Node.js. The second one was to get some basic stuff up and done going with Node with Express and NPM. And the third one is to get serial port running, uh, which I did not manage to do. So serial port just couldn't get it to work. Um, maybe I'll take a look at that later. But very briefly, just to give you a demonstration, I'm going to go and take a look at uh, a very basic installation of Express, which I've got. Now, first thing to note is the chip, when you log in, you log in with a login of chip and chip, or you can log in as a super user's root with a password chip. Um, and you notice there something very interesting, which is there was a sort of an odd little pause. And that little pause is something that just happens every now and again, so it's not a real-time operating system. But anyway, got Express installed. I used NPM uh, to install it after I installed NPM and did everything according to just looking at the website. Um, if you go and just Google installing NPM on Debian. Now, just let's take a look at this little script. We all know that the uh, canonical uh, hello world is to have not this. So let's get rid of this. Up there, it's done a little pause again, but instead to have hello world. That's the Kerning and Ritchie Hello World. So let's save that. And then we can do that with just run that and see what happens. Okay, so let's go over to our page and do a refresh. It wasn't running in the past. And there we are. Hello World. So it's up and running. Very nice that I've got so easily managed. It took me about an hour to get all of this up and running. So let's get rid of that. I've also got uh, Python running. If you want to look at NPM, it's all very simple. Again, what this strange little pause. Huh? Um, very simple and uh, also had a couple of other things installed. So let's have a look with uh, have a look at what we've got installed on NPM and very, very simple, just express and a couple of other things. And again, you can see this is not a Raspberry Pi, it's not a super powerful machine, but I think it is pretty amazing that I'm gonna, without too much trouble, getting express running, getting node running, and getting it all working on a unit that costs nine bucks smaller than, smaller than a credit card. Unfortunately, uh, serial port isn't working, that's what we really need to start having some fancy stuff with the ports, but I think it's a, nevertheless a very capable machine. I'm very, very impressed with it. So with that, I'm going to sign out and say next video, we're going to look at how to blink an LED.